Jim Panky here. Uh, is it not? <laughs> I am too. I am here. Yeah, it's Jim Panky. <laughs> it's me. I I, I, yeah. I I have I've invaded I've invaded Mason's space. <laughs> I'm everywhere. You know, I've told you all that before. <laughs> kind of like yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. Um, so uh, most of you all probably know about Jim already. So <laughs> if not, go check him out. Yeah. So anyway, we got this Van Gogh banjo here today. I did the part one a couple weeks ago where I just kind of did an overview of it, and now we're going to be trying to figure out how to improve it some. What? So th this is one of these things that comes up all the time. So I get students, and they get a banjo like this. And something like this, I think, like if you go on Amazon, they're about, what, 240 something like 239 Yeah. Just, just above the $200 mark. And what do you get for that? You, you get a banjo. Um, is it playable? Obviously, you know, I just picked a tune. Mason will pick you something here in a minute on it and uh, because I want to hear him play it. <laughs> uh, but I watched Mason's review, and, and it's a fair review, totally. Uh, because, you know, when you're starting out, you, you don't, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a banjo. And, you know, you want to get something playable, which this is. Uh, and then a lot of times you wind up with a question is, what can I do to make it better? What are the things? And, and you can go on the internet, you can go various different websites and just ask that question. How can I make my banjo better? And you're going to get a ton of answers. You're going to get mm -hmm. a ton of answers. And my experience with these, which, you know, they're inexpensive. They're a good starter instrument. This one actually plays quite well. Uh, it sounds pretty good. So I don't have a lot of issues with the, with the sound and the playability. The Mason, you mentioned this is the neck width. It, yeah. it, it's a little narrow, but if you don't know any different, and this is where you start, yeah, I, I don't I don't think you're going to have right. I, if it's it's not you start on if it's, if it's what you start on, you won't really notice. Yeah, it, it's not it's not unplayable. I personally, I prefer a little wider nut and so one of the first things that I always look at on these instruments and so let's well, basically why I'm here is to talk about what we could do to make this better and then we want to weigh the cost of that against the banjo mm -hmm. itself and then like well if you're gonna spend that much maybe let's buy another banjo so we're gonna talk about that so the first thing and the easiest thing and it's not terribly expensive but it is something you you might want to do yourself and you can look online there's instructions how to do it but I would probably be interested in changing this nut I, at the very least uh, changing the string spacing just a little bit but the problem with this this particular banjo and you can't see it on camera but the way that the frets are beveled at the edge it, it does limit you how how much width that you could add but you can add a little bit and and, and in truth little tiny changes makes a big difference mm -hmm. on how things feel. I mean, you can change that string spacing at the nut just by, oh gosh, a 32nd of an inch. A tiny little bit. And, and you're going to notice it. You immediately notice it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that's easy to change. So that wouldn't cost you much at all. I mean, literally, you could just re-slot this Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to fill the slots, and that's simple to do. Uh, just at your own risk, you can you can you can take a little bit of baking soda, a little bit of super glue, and fill these slots, and file them back down, and cut them where you want them. If you wanted to do that, honestly, I don't know that I would bother. But that's one thing that you could do. Another thing that's fairly easy to change is the bridge. Uh, this this bridge works. You know, it's it's a good height. It's made of maple, as far as I know. It's got an ebony, as far as I know, top. But a good maple and ebony bridge will cost you anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. So at the yeah. bottom end, twenty-five bucks for a for a good quality bridge that somebody actually made. Mm -hmm. And you may think, is it really going to make a big difference? It's going to make a big difference. Uh, you can, and I like even on my banjos, I will sit and experiment sometimes with bridge and say, okay, is that one I like? Is you know, and, and once I find one, you know, I kind of stick with it. I like on my 
like on the M5, y'all see me play. I've got a Gary Sosby bridge on it, and I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. I had tried a couple before it. That's the one that kind of worked, and so I've stuck with it. Uh, so that's, but I'm, it's not an endorsement or anything. It's just that's what I like because other banjos that I own, I don't have that. I've got probably some other kind of bridge. I, I mean, but I usually try to have a quality bridge. So that, that makes a big difference. And that's a huge thing that will change. That, that's probably the, of things that you can buy that'll change the sound of your banjo. Mm -hmm. That bridge is probably the, the one, I think. Then you also mentioned that you can get a crow space bridge to. Right. Yeah, so you can get. Strings a little. Right. You can get bridges with different spacing. So th this seems fairly narrow when I'm playing it. And I got big hands. So it's. Uh, it's a little narrow for me, but like I said, if this is what you're starting on, but you can go to a cross-based bridge. The strings are a little wider apart. That's kind of nice. Some places actually have, you can get a what they call a balkum spaced bridge, which is even a little wider, but I don't know that this neck would be friendly with that, but a cross-based bridge would be perfect. Right. So that give you a little more space. You can obviously tighten the banjo head. So you tighten the head on. I did. So yeah, and, and so you'll definitely want to tighten it up. And yeah, I don't know the question is how much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Enough? Yeah. <laughs> I try to get it close to a G sharp. Yeah. So he he's tuning it, and you can do that. I typically just tighten it t till it's fairly tight. See what it sounds mm -hmm. like. If it sounds good, I'm good. I right. don't, I don't <laughs> necessarily know what it's tuned to. Don't care. Uh, so that's. Those are some simple things that you could do. And it, right out of the box, just tighten your head. First and foremost, just right. go ahead and tighten the head. You may have to adjust string action. And I have a, I got a setup video that shows how I do yep. that. So I'll link that below so you can check that out. Perfect. So those are, those are the easy things to do that I wouldn't discourage you from trying to do. Now, you can, you can go all out. So... The, the tail pieces on these, they're functional. They do work. Uh, but you can add more mass by adding a better tail piece. But a better tail piece is going to cost you at least 50 bucks. You yeah. might, you can spend upwards to $100 or more on a tail piece. And that's a lot of money. So now you're talking to half the cost of the banjo almost mm -hmm. in a tail piece. Do you want to do that? It's totally up to you. Uh, Will it improve the sound? I think it will, uh, but you could stick that money in an envelope and save it for a, maybe a better banjo. Yep. So a tailpiece is, is definitely an option. Some people really don't like these guitar tuners. You know, they see these guitar style tuners and they think, well, I don't really like those, and can I replace those? And you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I think on the low end, probably about $50 for a set of just cheap planetary tuners, and they'll stick straight through and look more traditional. Will it make your banjo sound better? Probably not. It does add a little mass to the headstock, yeah. so there's some mass, so it could, it could improve your tone a little bit, uh, but it's another $50. Uh, what else did we say? Uh, this this count comes with a uh, Remo Weather King frosted head, which is pretty much industry standard. I mean, this is what mm -hmm. it's what I've got on my banjos. This is what I've got too. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's just kind of what they are. But you can you could change the head. This banjo might sound pretty good with a little heavier head. You could do a fiber skin head, which has a little more mass. It may will make the banjo less ringy. These banjos tend to suffer from a lot of overtones, a lot of ringiness. So right. when you hit a note, you're hearing a lot of different things ringing. And so a, a, a little thicker head might help. But there again, you're looking at 30 to 30, 35 dollars right. for a banjo head. So do you want to do that? You might. I remember, so I had a banjo very similar to this when I was learning to play, and one of the first things I did was take it apart and change the head. Right. I, and why? I don't know. It was a thing I, you know, I was 14 years old. What do you do when you're 14? You take things <laughs> apart. And so I, I took the thing apart, and I put a new banjo head on it, and immediately liked the sound of it better. And so, but, you know, but I put a little heavier head on it. Uh, and, and so the head is one of those uh, 
things that's not terribly expensive that you can do yourself. You can change this. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Just take your time. It's just it's just nuts on brackets. I mean, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, it's not hard. I believe I mentioned it before in a video somewhere. It's just, yeah. just loosen it and take it out and put in a new one. It's yeah, easy. it's not hard to do. And you, you, this is something like I know companies sell different colored heads. You can get mirrored looking. I had one, a banjo one time, had a mirror finish type oh, on the head. It was it was extremely annoying on stage, especially like if there was a spotlight or something, you could blind people with it. But kind of fun. Uh, but you know, and those are typically a little heavier, which kind of helps these instruments just a little bit. But again, that, that adds money. The other things that we mentioned, I think some some of these banjos, if you've got space, you can change this tension hoop, which is a that's that's a kind of a big deal. This this one doesn't have room to do it, so you really mm -hmm. can't. But that also adds some mass, makes the banjo sound a little more punchy, which is kind of what we're after. But all said and done, the things that we've talked about, with the exception of that tension hoop, we're looking at adding all. On the upwards end, depending on the pieces that we buy, as much as we spent for the banjo. And this right. banjo, you got the banjo, you got a gig bag, you got a strap and some got strings, or strings, pickup. Got a, <laughs> you can got a pickup. So you you've got. So my advice on that is, while you can have a, you know do things to your banjo to make it better. And maybe you want to do these things. And maybe you bought your banjo 10 years ago and you don't really want to invest you know, a whole lot of money, but you, you want to try to make yours better. You can take some of these ideas and, and make improvements that you want to do. And it, it's definitely not, uh, it's not an ex expensive endeavor if you're not counting the cost of your banjo. Right. <laughs> it, like I say, you know, you, you, this, this may have been, Duck behind your couch for five or six years. Right, and if there's something you've had and you just want to make it better without buying something else, you can make these upgrades on it. Yeah. So this uh, overall, I I don't have a problem with this, you know. I used to do a lot of private lessons, and I, I would never really have a problem with a student walking in with this. I wouldn't say, "Man, we're going to have to find you another instrument." Totally playable. You got the geared fifth peg, which is something I didn't have. And you can still buy banjos that don't have the geared fifth pick, which I don't mm -hmm. know why in this day and age we just don't put that on there. But it's uh, but it's totally playable. And uh, I'm gonna go grab a guitar unless you've got anything else to say. No, I just want to get your input on this. And, and we're I'm gonna let Mason play it for you. And I'll uh, I'll put some real rough guitar rhythm behind it. <laughs> All right, we'll be All right back. Ha, ha, ha.